Blackberry Blossom. Hey, I want to talk today about uh, three different uh, levels of playing flat picking guitar. Now, I'm not talking about like beginning, inter intermediate, or advanced. What I'm talking about is if you went and just downloaded a fiddle tune tab, okay, something this simple. First of all, could you play it in time? Can you read eighth notes and quarter notes? One, two, three. speed might be too fast at first okay but before you can do anything before you can go on you have to be able to read um, and play in time with a basic count of one two three four or one and two and three and four and or any combination of so that's level one okay so pretty basic beginning level number two is can you do it with down up picking Okay, so what we do is down on the downbeat and up on the upbeat. A lot of people get confused crossing strings and end up doing two downs in a row. And you can get away with it at a low tempo, but it doesn't really translate into a faster tempo very well. Now, of course, there's some people that can do it very well, um, but I will say for the vast number of people I'm... I, I'm taught over years and years and years, um, having good down up picking is really a huge key to success. Okay. And then the third level I'll talk about is, can you incorporate hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides and keep the down up picking going? This is really a challenge. Okay. Because what you have to do is literally miss a stroke. So for every hammer-on, you have to have an equal motion in your right hand that hits nothing. Now at first this is completely weird. Okay, so if I take a, a, a G scale, one, and I'll pick every note. Now, if I'm gonna hammer on from A to B, when I hammer on from A to B, I have to move my hand like I'm hitting the string and not hit anything. Did you see that? You think, now do, do people actually do this? Um, if it's not this exact thing, yes, they are making a motion of some kind. Um, it may become more refined, but this is how really good flat pickers can keep that flow going and incorporate hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay, now why would you want to incorporate hammer-ons and pull-offs? The reason you want to do that is to have a smooth legato sound. So not every note is tick, 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 but it has a, some smoothness to it. So I'm gonna play Blackberry Blossom with no hammer-ons, and then I'll play Blackberry Blossom with some hammer-ons and pull-offs and stuff added to it, so you can hear the difference. <laughs> Da, 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 da. 
da, 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 every note is just like this. Now I'm going to add some hammer ons. <laughs> It's a subtle difference, but that tends to be a more ver varied approach, and it has um, a little more smoothness to it. Now, how do you go about doing this? Take yourself a tab that you've got and just go right in. <laughs> go right in some hamtrons or go right in some pull-offs in it and see if you can do it, okay? And whenever you have a hammer-on or pull-off, you're gonna to have to miss the string, just like you would normally pick it, but miss it, okay? Give that a try. I've got lessons and classes all the time, andyslessons.com, and I teach on the Marcel channel too, um, so uh, lessonswithmarcel.com. So thank you very much, and let's give one more run to Blackberry Blossom. Mm -hmm.